Um, one final thing before, well, one final thing that we must do because we need it for the exercises. Namely, linear and quadratic discriminant analysis. So if you remember what we did last week, uh, we uh, were looking at statistical decision theory and at Bayes' theorem. And P of Y was the prior probability for one or the other class, if you're looking at a two-class problem. P of X given Y was the class density. So the probability density function of one class in feature space. So this was the class density and this was the prior and this was the posterior. And statistical decision theory told us that the posterior is the quantity of interest. Um, if we use a symmetric loss function, if the posterior probability of class w 2 is bigger than that for class 1, then we want to predict class 2. Now, the problem was that uh, all of this depended on these unknown quantities. And in a linear and quadratic discriminant analysis, which are also abbreviated as LDA or QDA, what you do is you uh, estimate the right-hand side of this equation and you make uh, a strong assumption, namely that the class density is a Gaussian. Now I will start with quadratic discriminant analysis and we want to find the decision surface or the decision rule. So I will say we have two classes. We have the class 2 and we have the class 1. And the set of locations x at which these two posteriors are equally large, that is the decision surface. And, uh, well, if you agree with this, then we can go on to put in the definitions and come up or come out with a function of x that tells us where the decision surface lies. So using Bayes' theorem, I can, uh, you know, I can insert the definition or I can write the posterior in terms of uh, what's written up there. So I have the, prob the class density So I'm uh, ignoring the uh, uh, normalizing uh, constant and writing the following. This is for class 2. This is the covariance function for class 2, which we also need to estimate from data. And I can, uh, or sorry, still need to multiply with the prior of class 2. And I write something similar on the right-hand side. Probability of class 1 times a normalizing constant times e to the something. Okay, and if we now want to, we now want to solve this for x. So I can... Uh, bring all these constants on one side by writing p of 2 times c of 2 divided by p of 1 times c of 1. And I'm taking a uh, logarithm of this entire expression and I'm multiplying with minus 2 to get rid of these minus 1 halves.
So these are all relatively simple manipulations and you can look it over again when, when you're at home. Okay. Um, and I can now collect terms of different orders. So I'm uh, first looking for everything that's bilinear in X. And then I'm looking for everything that's linear in X. Which is, well, minus two times. Or the minus two that I forgot. Okay. So in in other words, uh what we have is something of the form x transpose ax plus some vector b plus a scalar. And if you look at what we started out from, then uh, this is now my decision surface. This thing here. And something which is bilinear in X is a so-called quadric. And familiar examples of quadrics are uh, ellipses or hyperbolas or uh, parabolas or pairs of lines. So, uh, that's uh, really the most important part. So, what do we do? Uh, I need to estimate the um, can you please go once? Uh, can you go back, please? So, uh, to find this decision surface, I need to estimate these unknown quantities, which are the mean of my one class, the mean of my second class, and I need the to estimate the covariance matrices of my two classes. And once I have estimated all these quantities, I can plug them into this formula and obtain my decision surface. So, the set of points where the two posterior probabilities are exactly the same size. And if I move on one side of the, of the decision surface, I should uh, uh, predict this class. And uh, as soon as I move to the other side of the decision surface, I should predict that class. And here's an example. So I assume that this is the training data which is given, the blue and, uh, and the red dots. and I have now separately estimated the following things. Uh, from the red dots, I have estimated their center and their covariance matrix. And uh, using this assumption of uh, them being normally distributed, I obtain this Gaussian distribution as a fit to the red class. Similarly, I obtain that Gaussian distribution as a fit to the blue class. And I then estimate uh, the class priors so I simply count how many blue dots, how many red dots did I have. And then I have everything I need. I plug all of that into my, uh, uh, into my base formula or into my formula for finding the decision boundary. And here it is. So this uh, green ellipsis is my decision surface. Inside I, I will predict the blue class and outside I will predict the red class. 
So isn't that nice? So we've used um, the normal distribution to fit both classes and we, we obtain a very simple formula that tells us analytically what the, de what the decision surface will look like. Now, if you have uh, very high dimensional data and too few observations, which is typically the case nowadays, then uh, it may be a little bit dangerous to estimate so many parameters because the covariance matrix has of the order of p square parameters where p is your dimensionality. So you may want to fit a model with fewer degrees of freedom. And uh, there are different ways of doing that. An extreme way is to say that the two classes have the same covariance matrix. And if you look at the formula, um, if you assume that uh, the covariance matrix for class one and class two is the same, then the quadratic term cancels and you're only left here with uh, this linear expression, linear in X. And that then gives you linear discriminant analysis. So in other words, uh, LDA is a special case of QDA where you've assumed that the covariance structure of the two classes is the same. So in practice, you compute a pooled covariance matrix. And then as the name implies, well, your decision surface then simply is of the form B transpose X plus C. So it's just a hyperplane or a plane or in, in two dimensions, it's just a line. And in, if you work with high dimensional data, that often works well. It would not work well for the example that, that you've just seen. Can you show it once more, please? Uh, if you try and fit a linear line here, uh, you know, you're bound to fail because simply uh, we have too many red dots on the other side also. I can do it and, and I have done it, uh, but it won't look good. Okay, so here's the data. Here are the fits for my uh, two classes, assuming the covariance structure is the same. And here's the decision boundary which results, which is a bad idea. Okay. Now, these figures here are taken from the script, which is still very much in its embryonic state, but uh, that part at least you can read up if you uh, want or need to know more. Any questions? So you don't need to remember much. Base theorem we know by heart in the meantime. And for LDA, QDA, you simply plug in a Gaussian assumption um, for the class densities and the rest uh, is just manipulation. Okay, and you can uh, play uh, with this for yourself in the exercises that uh, Bernhard has kindly prepared. Wednesday, what time? Two o'clock? Wednesday, two o'clock. And next next week, I will be here, right? No matter, first of May, whatever. Um, I'll be here next week. <laughs>